Hey everybody, welcome to week four of the vlog. I can't believe it's been a month already. I think I've made some progress, but I'm not entirely sure. This week I'm tackling the texturing and ground covers on the bridge piece. I'm gonna look at some weathering techniques using simple acrylic paints, and I'm gonna see how the mold came out from the wall section from last video. So let's get to it. Okay, so here I have a bridge that I've made previously from the same Hearst Arts mold and painted up and varnished. It needs the matte coat afterwards, but it doesn't have um, an internal part to the bridge because the mold just makes the, the walls. So I've uh, raised it up on some uh, plastic card and put down this piece of uh, cereal box, which I've coated in a couple of layers of wood glue, so it's quite tough, um, but it needs a texture. So what I intend to do is use one of these Green Stuffed World textured rollers. Uh, this is the cobblestone one. Um, I'm going to roll it out over some clay material to put in there and leave it to dry. So I normally use these for bases and things um, and use a bake in the oven clay, um, but I can't bake this piece in the oven. So what I'm going to have to do is use air drying clay. The problem with air drying clay is that on large flat areas like this, it can crack when it dries. Um, so I'm going to use a trick that I've seen online a couple of times, which is to mix this with a little bit of PVA um, so that as it dries, it gets a little bit of elasticity from the PVA um, and doesn't crack. So I'm going to make a hell of a mess in this box with this clay, squidging it in with some PVA, putting it out flat and rolling it and seeing where we go. Right, another time lapse of me mixing these two together. It's about 10% PVA, maybe 5%, depending on how watery your PVA is. And you've just got to mix it and knead it together like a bread dough until it forms a really sticky dough that you need to leave for about 10 minutes. Right, so I've used a lot of water to, and a rolling pin to flatten this all out. Um, it's like about this thick at this point, so it's got a reasonable amount of coverage. What I'm gonna do is spritz it with a whole load of water and then roll the roller across the top. So I think I'm probably gonna get one shot at this before I would need to re-roll it if it goes horribly wrong. So I've used these rollers a couple of times now and the key is to continually press down on the roller and don't pause. So you have to use your hand to keep the pressure and the roll going and then move your hand back. Any patchy bits, I can probably get away with clearing up with some dirt scatter or grit on the top afterwards. And that's that finished. So yeah, there's a few patchy bits where it was uneven, but again, I'll cover those up with some scatter, but you can see you get a reasonably good impression. So I just need to now trim it to fit and lay it on top of the bridge. Okay, so I've laid it over the top and trimmed the ends to fit and then just sort of smushed them flat a little bit here. I'm just gonna push away where the clay's gone onto the actual plastic here. Um, once this sets, I'll be able to lift it off, remove this um, baking parchment that's on the back. Uh, this will be set firm, then I'll be able to PVA glue the whole thing down to the bridge and then it won't move. Um, I probably will paint it first um, because it's going to be easier to not get paint everywhere. And then once it's glued down, I'll just blend it in around the edges with a few bits of um, dirt and grit and stuff like that. And uh, then the whole piece should be ready to roll. So I sprayed it Zandri Dust, which is a Games Workshop colour, but any sand colour will work. And then just splotched on some mixed browns, greys and beiges to break up the cobblestone pattern. And here it is with a wash. I used dark brown made from acrylic paints and water, very simple, washed it over and given it a little bit of a beige dry brush just to pick out the details. Okay, this is the piece after I've done the dry brushing and I'm pretty happy with how it's come out. Uh, there's a lot of variation between the color and the stones. I didn't have to spend too long picking out the individuals in the end. What I'm gonna do now is try and do some work to blend in the edges and some of these errors here. So first up, I'm gonna work on the bits where there's an error because I'm gonna put a line of glue. This is just thinned down wood glue. The PVA will work just fine. I'm just gonna cover up the area that has to be covered like this and there's a join line just down here and what you don't want is a dead straight line across because it'll be obvious that you've, you are hiding a, an issue so you want to kind of break up that line by making it look a little bit more uneven and then I go in with the ground texture that I made last time so I just stir this up to get some of the smaller pieces and just put one or two of these on here this is from the coarse material and then I'm going to go in with the medium and kind of 
we can break everything up so nothing looks like it's been put down on purpose. And then have some of the fine over the top. So I've got a little spray bottle with a mixture of isopropyl alcohol and water. This is going to break the surface tension of the dirt that we've just put on. And this is just thinned down PVA um, or wood glue would work. It's about five parts water to one part glue, but you can go a little bit thinner. And this will just set everything in place. So I will just spray this on first of all, gently, so it doesn't move too much of the dirt. Um, if you see some of the glue start to come through, like it has done there, that means it's quite quite thick and has soaked up so we just put a little bit more of the dirt on like this and this will soak up the excess uh, glue and the isopropyl alcohol mix and everything will stick really really well like that and then give it one more spritz and now that everything's soaked through when I put this thin down glue on top it will soak right the way in and bond together and you'll get a nice strong layer of the dirt so you don't need a lot it's just a little bit like this to sit on top, like that, and you'll start to soak in. You can see it there. And this all dries clear anyway. You just don't want thick layers. So put lots of thin coats. So again, if this sets overnight and isn't quite right, I can either add a little bit more dirt or just put on another layer of glue and it should set really, really firm. Okay, so the bridge is about 90% dry at this stage. It's been out in the garden catching some sunshine, just a little bit of dampness you can see, which is why a couple of patches are a little dark. But this will lighten up a bit as it finally dries out and you can see it nicely using the dirt as seamlessly blended in the uh, cobblestone base with the walls. I've allowed some of the dirt to get in between some of the cobblestones as well. I've used it to blend the bottom of the bridge here and all of the sides like that. So there's no longer that nasty looking gap between the, the edge of the bridge and um, the base piece that I've put on. Um, I am oh, a little bit I need to get rid of there again you can just go around and brush off any loose dirt that did get in places you don't want it once this is fully set I will probably give the piece here a piece a coat of flat uh, varnish just to protect it from gaming because I don't want any pieces chipping off and um, this had a couple of coats of PVA on this soil and it's pretty tough at this point um, and ready to game on so this will be mounted on the board um, when I get round to it and I can add this to the collection of completed terrain pieces because I'm here from the, the mould that I made from last week, I'm going to give it a test out. First thing I've got to do is cut this small bevel off the edge here. Um, it's, it's got a little bit of a lip from when the rubber was in the mould, so I'm going to bevel that off and leave the bottom nice and flat and uh, get to doing a cast. Alright, this is the moment of truth to see how well this has done. It seems to have set quite nicely. just going to pop it out of the mould and see if it was worth all the effort. So it's fairly easy to take it out because I used a bit of rinse aid as a release and yep, pretty happy with that. Got one or two little air bubbles where I mainly just make a quick amend to the mold, but overall pretty happy with how that's come out. So I just got to do this another 21 times, I think. Okay, so I'm here with another piece that I'm building. I've built uh, this from Her Starts Casting Blocks again. Um, this was all from one mould. It's a ruined tower. Um, it's got kind of like a weather top feel going on. I'm going to do some weathering on it that I'd seen on um, the Terrain Tutor, um, which I will try and link in this video if I can figure that out on YouTube. And it's because I didn't want to do all over washes because I want to kind of keep this dry and weathered look that I've managed to achieve. I've done a lot of the dry brushing so that it's darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. I don't want to ruin that with too heavy a wash. So I'm going to put some very, very localized wash on this model. And I'm going to do it with some browns and some blacks. So the things I've got to achieve this are a dark brown uh, wash made of a mixture of brown and black acrylic paints. And I've got um, some thicker version of a similar colour here. And I've got a little spray bottle with some water in it. And I've got my paintbrush. So where I want to put this weather effect is going to be in the recesses around here. And probably in the corners of these windows. I'll show you on this bit here because it's super easy to see. But I'm going to apply it in a number of places where rain and dirt and grime would gather. And the first thing to do is to wet the area. So I'm going to use this little spray bottle and I'm just going to spray water on like that to kind of help the paint move around. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with my wash 
and I'm going to put this wash, which is moderately thinned down, um, kind of over the area here and use the wetness um, from the spray to help me feather it a bit so it's not too obvious where there's going to be a border. So I'll feather it out like this far. I've got a bit of tissue that I'll just wipe the excess off and then I'll just feather the edge with a brush to make it kind of subtle. And then I will get the thick paint. So getting the thick paint on the brush here. And what I will do is I will run that right into the corner here like that where the two parts meet. So the concentration of colour is there. Again, I'm wiping the pen, I'm wiping the brush on uh, a bit of tissue, and then I'm just again just going to gently feather that out a little bit, so that it's a little bit subtle and has a bit of a gradient to it. And I'll try and apply this in a couple of other places and come back and see how it looks. Okay, so it's mostly dried, and you can see now that there's, uh, if I'm getting the right light, there's a nice sort of gradual uh, effect here where it kind of looks like there's light almost coming through the archway and there's just a nice bit of brown staining on some of the areas where I applied this effect. What I'm going to do just to jazz it up a little bit more is here on the outside um, where there's a couple of places in amongst these um, broken pieces here where you know, rain might gather and you can add a bit of visual interest to this grey wall. What I'm going to do is again spritz it with the water to make everything wet but not soaking wet. And then I'm just going to get a little bit of the brown wash and kind of cover the area. It'll be quite messy with this because this is not a very strong colour at all. This will just tint the area like this. And then I'm going in and getting, again, just a little bit of the thicker undiluted paint on my brush. And I'm just going to paint that into the recesses where you want the colour concentrated. Right now it looks pretty awful, um, but don't panic because this is why we wet the area. Uh, the paint won't dry yet. And then I'm just getting a wet brush, same brush, and just feathering it out gently. If there's a bit too much, you can wipe the tissue, or brush on the tissue, and then use it to pick up any excess paint and wipe that away. And if it starts to dry, because it's pretty warm today, um, you can just spritz it again with the water bottle, which is why it's really handy to have that around. And if I give that a minute to dry, you can kind of see it looks like rain running down, breaks up the grey area, but isn't too concentrated in there. It looks a little strong. So again, just going to uh, hope the camera focuses and get in there and just kind of wick it away a little bit and like that and spread the paint out so it's thinner and then gives a nice effect. And when this is dry, this will look like rain streaking and break up all of the grey on the piece. Um, and look quite realistic because this, this is places where you know water would gather. I'll probably add a bit down here, a bit here, maybe some in this little lip that's here because that's where it would gather. And just kind of make it look a little bit more realistic and interesting. Excuse the background noise. I've taken this out in the garden for a bit of shaky cam footage just because the lighting and the natural light shows much better what the effect looks like where the browns have dried. So you can see in there it looks nice gradient. And if I turn it round to the other side, a horrendous video um, you can see that the streak effects aren't too obvious and are nice and subtle so I'm going to go for that look all over the whole piece maybe get a few greens in there as well for like mossy growth um, and I'll try and post a picture up on the Instagram and or feature it in next week's video to show what the whole thing came out like